The problem with finding the derivative of this equation graphed here is that y is buried inside a power function. And in fact, whenever we have y buried inside a power or a product function or a trig function, etc., trying to solve the equation for y can break it into multiple functions, and then it becomes really difficult to find the derivative. So instead of trying to solve for y, we'll use implicit differentiation on the original equation, which is going to give the derivative directly without trying to untangle y. I'm going to show you the single habit that's going to make implicit differentiation automatic, and then we'll handle tangents, second derivatives, and other tricky cases. So what is this single habit? Well, here's the core concept. Every time you differentiate a term that includes y, you must apply chain rule, which means you're going to multiply by y prime instantly. We're going to establish this core habit right away, and then we're going to talk about combining implicit differentiation with other derivative rules, finding tangent lines and slopes at particular points, and how to find second derivatives with implicit differentiation, all of which are going to be critically important to know for the AP exam. So let's look at that core habit. What does it even mean to multiply by y prime? Well, when we use implicit differentiation, we take the derivative of every term on both sides of the equation separately. So when we differentiate this equation, we take the derivative of the x squared term, the derivative of the y squared term, and the derivative of 25. We already know how to differentiate x squared. The derivative is 2x. And we know the derivative of 25, a constant, is 0. The only thing we don't know is how to find the derivative of y squared. That's where implicit differentiation comes in. Well, every time we differentiate y, we can think about treating it like a normal variable, like x. So in the same way that the derivative of x squared is 2x, the derivative of y squared is 2y. Except, because we just differentiated something that includes y, we have to immediately multiply by y prime. This is the core habit, this is the key to implicit differentiation. As soon as we take the derivative of something with y, we multiply by y prime. Keep in mind that y prime we'll also see as dy dx. These are just two different ways of writing exactly the same thing. Now, remember the whole goal was to find the derivative of this equation. Well, the derivative is y prime or dy dx, which means we need to solve for this value. And we solve an equation that includes y prime, just like we would any other equation. So our first step here is to subtract 2x from both sides. Then we'll divide both sides by 2y because that'll give us y prime by itself on the left-hand side. We notice that we can clean up this right-hand side a little bit by canceling the 2s in the numerator and denominator, and that leaves us with y prime equal to negative x over y, and that is our derivative, which we were able to find without having to solve this equation for y. So that's our core habit. But when we use implicit differentiation, we're going to run into a problem right away. We're going to see terms like this, where x and y are tied up together in the same term. What do we do with this? Well, what we have to realize is that this is the product of x and y, so we need to be ready to apply derivative rules like power rule, product rule, and quotient rule. When we try to differentiate this equation, we're going to take the derivative, again, term by term, of xy, add to that the derivative of y squared, set equal to the derivative of 5. We're differentiating every term individually. When we differentiate this first term, though, we need product rule. That means we're going to take the derivative of x, leaving y as it is, then add to that the opposite situation. This time, leave x as it is and take the derivative of y. We know the derivative of y squared. We saw it in the last example. It's 2y, and then we immediately multiply by y prime, or this time we'll show it as dy dx, same thing. And we know the derivative of 5 is 0. If we simplify this product rule part, the derivative of x is 1, that's normal, multiplied by y plus x, multiplied by now the only tricky part here, the derivative of y. Well, if we think of y as a normal variable like x, the derivative of y would just be 1. But then, because we differentiated something with y, our core habit is we immediately multiply by its derivative dy dx or y prime. Now we can simplify the entire equation. This portion here is going to become y plus x dy dx. We'll then take away our brackets and move y to the right side. That gets all our dy dx terms on the left side and all our non dy dx terms on the right side, which then is going to allow us to factor out a dy dx on the left and then dividing both sides by x plus 2y gets dy dx on its own, and we have the derivative of y without actually ever solving this equation for y. So we saw what happened when we combined product rule with implicit differentiation. But what about if we have y tangled up in a trig function? Well, the same thing is true. We can still use all the derivative rules that we're used to. We're just combining them now with this core habit of multiplying by y prime every time we differentiate something that includes y. So here on the left side, we see right away we're going to need to use product rule because we have the product of x and sine of y. 
So if we apply that product rule formula, we take the derivative of x, leaving sine of y alone, then we add to that the opposite scenario where we leave x alone and take the derivative of sine y. We'll come back to these derivatives, but that's the application of product rule on the left side. For the right side, we take the derivative of y squared and the derivative of cosine x. Now if we work through this left to right, the derivative of x is one, no problem there. Then we multiply by sine y. Again, because we apply product rule, we're leaving that sine y as is. We don't need to differentiate it. That particular function wasn't being differentiated when we applied product rule. Then we add to that x times the derivative of sine y. Here, we're taking the derivative of something that includes y. So the derivative of sine is cosine. We get cosine y, but then because we differentiated something that includes y, our core habit, we immediately multiply by y prime. Then on the right hand side, we know already the derivative of y squared is 2y times y prime. We've seen that a couple times. And then the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. Nothing different there. That's a function in only x. We don't have to do anything special. Then we simplify. So on the left hand side here, 1 times sine y gives us sine y. We get x times cosine y times y prime. And on the right side here, we clear those parentheses and include that negative sign. And then we move all of our terms that include y prime to the left hand side. So we brought over 2y y prime by subtracting it from both sides to move it to the left. We also moved sine y to the right side by subtracting it from both sides. So now we have all of our y prime terms on the left. Anything that doesn't have y prime included goes to the right. That's going to allow us to get to the same step we've seen already. We factor out y prime from the left side. We also went ahead and factored out a negative sign on the right side. Not necessary, but reads a little better. And then we can divide both sides by this thing that is multiplied by y prime, leaving, of course, y prime, the derivative by itself, using implicit differentiation without us having to solve the original equation for y, which you can see we never would have been able to do. So we have our core habit. We know how to combine implicit differentiation with other derivative rules. Now we're going to start getting into some of those advanced applications. And these are critical because you're going to see them all the time in the free response questions on the AP exam. So we absolutely have to know how to solve problems like these. The first of which is finding the slope of a function at a particular point and or the tangent line at that point. You must know how to do this before you take the AP exam. So we're going to differentiate here term by term. The derivative of x squared is 2x. For xy, we have to use product rule. So we'll take the derivative of x, that's 1, and then multiply it by y without differentiating. Then we add to that the opposite scenario. This time, we leave x alone without differentiating and multiply by the derivative of y. The derivative of y is 1, but then we immediately multiply by y prime. Then the derivative of y squared, we already know, is 2y, y prime, and we differentiate the constant on the right-hand side. We simplify cleaning up the multiplication and then we move all of our y prime terms to the left and all of our non y prime terms to the right. We factor out y prime on the left side and then we divide through to get the derivative. Now, if we've been asked to find the slope at a point like we have here at the point two one, we'll see this all the time in the FRQs. We need to evaluate this derivative at the point we've been given two one. So when we plug in two one here in the numerator, we're gonna get two times two plus one is five. In the denominator, we're going to get 2 plus 2 times 1, which is 4. So the derivative at 2, 1 is negative 5 over 4. Or we can say the slope at the point 2, 1 is negative 5 fourths. Sometimes we'll also be asked to find specifically the equation of the tangent line. This isn't enough because this is just the slope of the tangent line at this point. The equation of the tangent line we need to write in point slope form, which is that y minus y1 equal to m, the slope, times x minus x1. We plug in the slope for m, negative 5 fourths, and we plug in the point 2, 1 here, x minus x1, or x minus 2, and y minus y1, or y minus 1, and this then is the equation of the tangent line. And then we can label our answer where this is the slope at the point 2, 1, and this is the equation of the tangent line at the point 2, 1. Sometimes we will also specifically need to identify where we have horizontal and vertical tangent lines. This is another really common FRQ. So how does that change our process? How do we find specifically horizontal and vertical tangents? Well, let's say we're starting with this equation since we've already looked at it. We already have seen that the derivative here using implicit differentiation is negative x over y. That will be our first step, finding the derivative. Once we have this derivative, horizontal tangent lines are always going to appear where the numerator of the derivative is equal to zero. In this case, our numerator is x. 
So we take the numerator, x, and we set that equal to 0. So we say x equals 0. If this was not already solved for x, we would need to solve it for x. In our case, it is already solved for x, so we can say that horizontal tangent lines exist wherever x is equal to 0. Vertical tangent lines, on the other hand, are going to exist wherever the denominator of the derivative is equal to 0. Our denominator happens to be y, so we set y equal to 0, and we know vertical tangent lines are going to show up wherever y is 0. We are not done. If this is an FRQ, this is not the answer. We need to give specific coordinate points where we can find horizontal and vertical tangent lines. So what we need to do is plug these values back into the original equation, x squared plus y squared equals 25. When we plug x equals 0 into that equation, we end up with y squared equals 25 or y equal to positive or negative 5. We can't forget this positive or negative. When we take the square root of both sides of y squared equals 25, that square root 25 results in positive or negative 5. Then we pair x equals 0 and y equals negative 5 and positive 5 together to make two coordinate points, 0 and negative 5, and 0 and positive 5. These are the two coordinate points at which this equation will have horizontal tangent lines. We need to do the same thing to find the vertical tangent lines, we plug y equals 0 into this equation. That's going to leave us with x squared equals 25. When we take the square root of both sides of that equation and solve for x, we get x equal positive or negative 5, which means we have vertical tangent lines at negative 5, 0 and positive 5, 0. That means if you get this problem for a free response question, you want to state that the equation has horizontal tangent lines at 0, negative 5 and 0, positive 5, and vertical tangent lines at negative 5, 0 and 5, 0. What happens, though, if we're asked to find the second derivative using implicit differentiation? And this is another very common problem that we see in the free response questions, and it is to find the second derivative of an equation that's implicitly defined. So our only option is going to be to use implicit differentiation. The first thing we do is use the core habit that we've already built to find the first derivative. We already know how to do that. Once we have the first derivative and we're finding the second derivative, we need to differentiate again. So we're going to have to differentiate this equation here. And when we do, we're going to be able to find the second derivative. Here's what that's going to look like. We're going to go back to the fact that we can combine implicit differentiation with the other derivative rules we already know, like we talked about, power rule, product rule, quotient rule. Well, here, we're going to have to use quotient rule. And remember that quotient rule tells us that we take the derivative of the top, the numerator, so the derivative of the numerator, 2x plus y, we multiply by the denominator without touching it. Then from that, we subtract the numerator without touching that, multiplied by the derivative of the denominator. That whole thing is the numerator of our quotient rule formula. Then we divide that by the denominator squared. So x plus 2y quantity squared. We keep this negative sign out in front. This is just one big application of quotient rule. And we actually haven't taken any derivatives yet. So we didn't even really apply implicit differentiation in this step. But we still need to find these two derivatives, the derivative here of 2x plus y and the derivative here of x plus 2y. When we do that, the derivative of 2x plus y is going to be 2 for the derivative of 2x, and the derivative of y is going to be 1, but then immediately multiply by y prime. We're going to leave the x plus 2y and the minus 2x plus y, but then multiply that by the derivative of x plus 2y, where the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of 2y is going to be 2 times 1, but then immediately multiplied by y prime. And then there's nothing to do in our denominator, so we leave that as is. And then from here, for the FRQ, it is critical that we replace y prime with that first derivative equation that we would have found before. So wherever we have y prime in our second derivative, we're going to plug in the value we know for y prime. So we plug that in. Over here, that y prime is multiplied by 2. You see that 2 right there. But that's all that's left to do. We leave the denominator as is. We've found all of our derivatives. In other words, we've addressed d dx wherever we see it. We found our derivatives. And then we've plugged in everywhere that we had a y prime. From here, do not waste your time simplifying this big expression. The College Board will not give you any extra points for making this prettier. All you have to do is plug in for y prime and then you leave this as is. As long as everything here is mathematically correct in your second derivative, you do not need to waste time on the exam doing the algebra of multiplying out everything in the numerator here and trying to simplify. Once you get to this point, indicate that this is your final second derivative and move on.
So if you can remember your core habit of multiplying by y prime every time you differentiate something that includes y, if you remember that implicit differentiation can be combined with other derivative rules like the power rule, product rule, and quotient rule, and if you know how to find the derivative at a point, the equation of the tangent line, including identifying horizontal and vertical tangents, and if you can find the second derivative using implicit differentiation, you'll be very well prepared to tackle everything about implicit differentiation, including any implicit problems that you run into in the FRQs. If you'd like more help with anything in AP Calculus, make sure to check out my Ultimate Review Packet and Ultimate Exam Slayer down below, which are both a huge help as you move through AP Calculus throughout the school year and prepare for the AP exam. Mm -hmm.